these clips will be linked in the description. Uh, they're available on YouTube. You can find, uh, well, they're, they're playing them now on a government-funded television. So I saw the whole thing, but you can find these clips in YouTube and they'll be uh, linked in the description as well. Now, who you'll see is uh, uh, Brian Foster. Same, same, you know, um, incredible, incredible stuff. Uh, done a few videos on him now, even standard quarry marks that can be found in any limestone sandstone uh it can be found here in sydney he calls these advanced ancient ex unexplainable claw marks and so forth literally this guy even knows zero about traditional stone working and properties of stone or he's just an outright fraud so it's either incompetence uh total ignorance and or fraud and david childress same thing you always see these guys saying the same thing it's impossible to do with this uh, or that. You can't lift this. You can't lift that. It's impossible. It's impossible. Mainstream archaeology is suppressing us, keeping us down, ignoring all these things. Uh, you know, impossible, therefore, lost high technology. And, uh, well, okay, he's another classic example. So, uh, again, in the video, like here we see them, he's brushing, you know, I'm writing in a notebook, and yes, and I'm brushing a stone for some reason to give the appearance of of diligence and research and study and it's clearly they have zero interest in doing even the most basic research or they're just frauds uh, now you always hear precision advanced machining precision 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 perfect right angles corners perfect flatness well it's this is one sample of um again like not a right angle uh, but you'll also notice the pitting in this stone so as it will little holes in the stone here. Now later on they're going to say that this is clear evidence that Pumapunko is tens of thousands of years old or so, you know, some, you know, pushing it back. It's always, uh, there was an ice age there for advanced high technology. Underpants gnomes type of logic. Now, quote from here, uh, one of the amazing things here at Pumapunko is the precision of the blocks. Precision, precision. Uh, you can see with this block of granite, and he calls it granite, but it's andesite. That's an important feature because, again, what the the the, the leap of logic that they make uh, is a, a remarkable. Anyway, you can see with this block of granite that it's really being cut at a at very accurate right angles. I have a building square here, and and this this is important. They literally filmed and published this. Okay, now. Uh, you can watch the full video so that I'm not getting it out of context. So those links will be in the description. Now, I'm not sure what a very accurate right angle means by them, but if I presented that as a very accurate right angle in industrial arts in high school, I'd uh, <laughs> I'd get chalk thrown at me. Again, he puts it down. Oh, look, there's daylight there. It's clearly not, not a right angle, not precise, not very accurate. Any historic building uh, across the world, uh, higher precision than this would be, be standard to say that this is precision or right angles is just it's uh laughable that that he would allow himself to be like is he lit are they literally trolling is this a big joke uh well, there's money to be made from there and again sort of neither one side is touching not so not only is this, the stone is very very imprecise in in any sort of historical uh scale um so if this is their best evidence, imagine what got left on the cutting room floor. It would be comedy gold mine. Uh, technology of the gods, again, you know, it's impossible with primitive tools, therefore lost high technology uh, of aliens or gods. How do I know it's impossible? Well, I've never actually ever done anything to test it, and therefore I know it's impossible. Where, where did this impossible trope come from? You'll hear all these channels, it's impossible, it's impossible. Where is their source? Well... I don't, it's an invention, it's a fiction, and that's why they need to suppress all the examples of people actually doing this type of work uh, and getting doing the impossible. In this episode, Brian Foster says, Pumapunko is the best evidence for extraterrestrials. That ancient aliens guy says that it's proof of extraterrestrials and it's, it's the best proof. Now, everywhere he looks and he sees a piece of stone, he sees advanced, lost high technology aliens, but for some reason, Pumapunko is is the best evidence for extraterrestrials again this guy impossible therefore lost ancient high technology join me on an overpriced tour where i point at stones and say impossible uh where i say precision and and so forth and it's clearly not and here are some of my books so uh which are largely just copy pasted sections from wikipedia which obviously hasn't even read because or or 
delep or deliberate deception. I don't really know the difference. So just to be clear, blocks such as these are used as evidence of advanced technology of of some civilization or of aliens. These two. So literally it's a groove cut in a piece of andesite with some uh, almost equidistant <laughs> holes drilled in it. And they literally say that, oh, these holes are either equidistant or almost equidistant. So you can't sort of, you know, get a, a piece of, of, of bone or wood or of copper and drill two holes in it and use them as a gauge to keep your distance. Like, where, have a lot, where is the problem-solving skills of, of this particular crowd? I don't, I don't get it now. Again, any historic building to do court, like, wow, like, what, how, how is that even remotely lost high technology? Christopher Dunn, uh, he's really good at, at uh, faking experiments, such as his core drill experiment, which was done by a machine, and then he tried to pass it off as if it was done by hand. He couldn't even remove a uh, granite core with a piece of copper. Uh, he couldn't polish his granite core because he used 80 grit. Uh, and just it, it's a, a litany of disaster um, in, in regards to this you know, expert, engineer, author. Again, lost high technology must be ancient. Uh, quote is the time code as well, and the, this is the ancient aliens guy. My hair is weird, therefore, you know, look at my beads, you know. Um, of course, the most fascinating question is what tools were used 5,000 years ago because something very sophisticated was used and not chicken bones. He has a fetish with chicken bones uh, and sophistication. Now, I don't know where he gets his source from, like who, you know, he's saying everything was done with, with chicken bones, but uh, you. you Cutting stone, any stone, whether it's with steel, with copper, or with bone, can be done because he doesn't clearly understand how things work. So whether it's steel, copper, it's the abrasive, it's the sand that does the cutting. This has been known since ancient times. It's uh, I've I've got examples where I, I I use a drill with a PVC pipe to cut into granite. Uh, so bones would be even better. But I don't know where his fascination is. It's just a trope, actually. It's a very cheap psychological trick that they just keep throwing it in there to um, make the the other side seem ludicrous and to protect their very lucrative and uh, bogus full of uh, of lies and deceit industry <laughs> Chris Dunn replies not chicken bones not copper chisels not stone chisels the, ch the tools that were used to create these blocks the H blocks at Pumo Punko do not exist in the archaeological record, implying firstly he knows what's in the archaeological record. He's even looked, bothered to look at uh, all of the uh, studies, or you know, and um, bothered to address all the experiments that have been literally, literally done to show that it can be exposed. And we'll have a look at this. So, the only thing remotely, uh, whether it's flat surfaces, drilling with holes, cutting with copper, I've made videos, filmed it, and put it on there. I know, like it's there's nothing remarkable I've seen here that I haven't literally done myself, posted and shown you how to do very cheaply, very easily, and quite quickly as well. The only thing that I haven't done, and the only thing that could be remotely difficult, is these trihedral corners, and that's been done with nothing but flint and sandstone to polish as well. So. That's done. There is nothing here. So even lifting, I've shown examples. Uh, the South Americans, um, In Incans, they were very good at rope making and knot tying. If you know how to tie a good knot, you can make a very effective crane from a single piece of rope. It's a, a trucker's hitch is one example of a hitch knot that can be used as a, as a compound pulley. You don't need steel and, and you know and bearings to make a compound pulley. You need a single piece of rope. Uh, Traditionally, they still use that. All lifting technology, only thing that's changed is better materials, and they've added either a, a, an electric or a, or a fuel um, motor engine to those. All modern lifting technology is based on ancient technology. All of that technology is based on sailing. To rig a, for a small crew to manipulate a sail uh, against those massive winds. There are huge forces that go onto even a small sail, even in a medium breeze. Uh, those forces are massive, so for a small crew to, to manipulate, manage, tighten sails, they have to have knowledge of mechanical advantage. That's how cranes work. If they could sail, they can lift. If they can sail, they can move massive stones. Uh, the, the, the same materials used to make the boats, for instance, Lebanese red cedar, 
can support the weight of any stone ever known to have been moved in all of history, including the Baalbek stone. Hemp rope can support those weights. This is just a, a, a fact that these materials can support that weight, and it is a well-known fact that people who were sailing had to use that, because if you're not using mechanical advantage, you are just not sailing. Uh, you could maybe go across and you know in a in a nice breeze down the river or across the lake, but uh, to make any sort of sail ship that's going to stand uh, even a medium breeze, a small crew needs mechanical advantage. Just has to be, but trihedral inner corners. That's the only thing that's remotely difficult, and it's actually quite simple. And it's been shown in an experiment. Let's have a look at that. Uh, the Serapeum boxes, sarcophagi, coffers, whatever you want to call them at Egypt. Again, you'll always hear precision, flatness, precision, it's machined, clear evidence of machinery. Well, like it's just not, you know. And uh, But this is another sort of example because, again, the, this uh, they say it with such, you know, confidence and, and it sounds all very science-y. Uh, but, uh, again, the, this is just, even by their own... <laughs> it is just remarkable that uh, these characters get away with it for so long. So, uh, David Childress, again, ancient technology, ancient technology of the gods. Uh, um, now, clearly, they don't, uh, either they're like 100% ignorant of the topics they're talking about, uh, or it's a scam and they need to suppress, you know, all of the, you know, clear examples where people have done those things that are called impossible. So here I am with a notebook, you know, here I am with a brush for some reason, you know, let's, you know, look, why don't you just, you know, put on a holster and play cowboys at this sort of part, it's just a, it's, it's a farce, it's a, um, yeah. But what they're saying uh, in this episode as well is that this pitting, so these little sort of holes, you know, they're, uh, you know, evidence of tens of thousands of years old, or, you know, always pushing it back, you know, because there was a, it was an ice age, and therefore lost high technology, again, underpants gnomes, you know, like, w why does one compare with the other? Did the laws of physics change? Uh, but anyway, he, David Childress keeps calling it uh, granite as well. So this type of pitting, you know, little the holes in there, it's evidence of erosion, therefore it must be really old. I don't know if you've ever seen the sort of a chaotic, you know, way that erosion happens, which would have just been like, you know, you know, how erosion doesn't happen like that, but um, anyway, why is that? Well, an important feature, and so again, they should know this. You know, it is it's uh, all of their books and their works have been published since the internet's been around. Not that that's an excuse because they could have gone to the library and look into these things. They point at stones and say impossible. So, even pre internet, you know, people were able to do research, they're post internet, and they haven't been able to do research. So, granite, basalt, andesite are all igneous rocks. That's why they're all so similar. Now, for instance, they have essentially the same hardness in the much quoted Mohs hardness scale. When these characters, Brian Foster, etc., talk about the Mohs hardness scale, clearly they have no understanding of what it means because they will compare Mohs hardness scale with hammers so that somehow there's a connection there. Therefore, stone hammers don't work. Literally, stone hammers do work, but Brian Foster says uh, because the, you know, they're different on Mohs hardness scale, uh, that it doesn't work, and again, it's first principles of logic should tell you because diamond is at the top of Mohs hardness scale, therefore a diamond hammer should be able to smash anything, 
yet you can smash a diamond with much softer tools on those hardness scale. It is remarkable. Uh, complete lack of logic, total ignorance, or just outright fraud. Very tricky, but magma. Okay, magma is below the ground. Once it gets above the ground, it's called lava. Okay, granite is formed by magma. That's how granite is formed. It cools underneath, b b below the earth surface. When lava gets above ground, it forms several. You know, but basalt is lava that's cooled down. That's, that's that's really the difference. So there's sort of this like stones like granite, and there's stones like basalt. One of those stones like basalt is andesite. It's formed by lava cooling above ground. Another type of stone like that is scoria, um, commonly used as landscaping pebbles at Taco Bell. <laughs> okay, so it, it is very common and around there. But just to highlight that. Bas Scoria, basaltic and andesitic in composition. Here's some samples of scoria just from uh, garden beds. Okay, now if you zoom in close, you see all these little holes in there. There are a couple reasons for it. These, this is caused by gas bubbles. Uh, they get trapped in there. Uh, do I have the picture? We'll see it. Okay. Lava, gas bubbles. That's how. That, that's what's going on piece of scoria I spent all the 10 minutes grinding it down to a precision flat surface if you rub two stones to one and one against one another they're going to create a flat surface if you alternate between three stones you're going to create a, a precision surface of flatness within like 30 nanometers this is how they make surface plates but so there's my scoria you know again a few minutes easy to get and uh, precision flatness but what does the surface look like it looks like that when you grind it down gas bubbles, vesicular basalt, vesicular andesite, it forms gas bubbles, so some basalt you see is very dense without the, an andesite also, but you'll also find basalt, andesite, uh, trachyte, uh, another type of sim stone like that where you see these gas bubbles trapped inside there. Just a close up again, you see all the little air bubbles, the gas bubbles formed inside, very common. This is a piece of tracheandesite from the Clermont Ferrand uh, Cathedral in France. No. Anyway, andesite. Occasionally, andesite may contain some larger crystals or round pockets that were gas bubbles. Andesite is a volcanic rock. It is finely grained because it forms by rapid cooling of magmas, usually when it erupts onto the Earth's surface, forms lava flows. Now, it can be just below, but like deep is magma, but lava is uh, on the surface or at surface level different uh, it's picking up different uh, minerals and and releasing different gases and so forth uh, here's Pumapunko and here's another example of Pumapunko and again where you see clearly what type of um, what's going on there so these you know characters it's you know magnetic <laughs> anomalies and <laughs> all this type of stuff I can't cut out oh, it's important you know but uh, that this pitting is Again, they say this, you know, sign of erosion, therefore, let's push it back uh, 10,000, 20,000. Why not a Why not a million years? Why not just, you know, go back? Um, but what's actually going on there? Here's the face of scoria I spent, like, you know, grinding down. So I could, you know, if I wanted to, I'd say, well, oh, look what I found. This is clear evidence. It's flat surface. Look at that uh, erosion in there. This must be prehistoric lost high technology of of you know civilization x or of alien aliens clearly did this it's, it's obvious clearly aliens some you know whatever that's what's what's going on um they should know this they publish they like to put shade on everyone else you know everyone oh, no one's you know looking um, so again, they're utterly, utterly incompetent and ignorant of the thing that they claim to have passion for, that they've done for decades. Uh, they have no excuse for not doing this research. So it's either, again, utter incompetence like on, on a cosmic scale of incompetence or just outright scam. And given that they will not address any contrary opinions and suppress it and still keep, even once they've shown, you know, as the saying goes, an error only becomes a mistake when you refuse to correct it. If you refuse to correct it for profit, 
that's basically fraud in in most jurisdictions pretty much i think all jurisdictions really but it's snake oil they know it's not the truth and they keep pushing it and they just will not relent so uh you, you, you know um you can't be soft with these tight you know some people have to hit rock bottom um you know and and anyway completely ex like literally like with the magnetic anomalies uh, you can't cut, it's impossible to do this, you need diamond level technology, it's, it has to be laser cut, all just r rubbish, absolute rubbish. And so, anyway, let's play their game, alright? Now, I'm going to show you some amazing precision stonework, lost high technology, and where is that going to be? It's going to be in Sydney, Australia. This is the Colonial Mutual Life Building in Sydney, in Martin Place in Sydney, it's opposite the GPO. Uh, GPO, probably, I think, 1870, a few years either way. Uh, single piece granite laved columns before modern precision lave, you know. So, again, uh, Sydney, which is definitely not an ancient place, ha is full of, of um, some very beautiful stonework. Now, what do we see here on the uh, Colonial Mutual building, completed 1892? various types of stonework but in a moment we'll flash back up so again this pitting in the stone uh, notice the precision flat laser cut you know precision precision flatness on there why do I could go to France or London or, or Rome and find much older stone than this which was clearly not made with precision advanced machinery laser cut technology these you know corners and so forth but why do these not count as you know lost ancient uh, alien slash you know impossible technology? Why is it just the amount of uh, sculpture um, construction work that's you know again just basically in every major city that's you know b before the modern you know precision advanced diamond saw laser cut machinery? It, the the evidence that this lost ancient high technology you know slash ancient aliens. Um, is either utterly ignorant or just an outright scam because like w w would a being so passionate about stone would they not look for other elements would they not examine traditional techniques um, where, where is this uh, it's 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 cringe utter utter ignorance and incompetence or it's just an outright scam and the evidence for it is like everywhere this is not 10,000 years old advanced ancient machinery by the dating of a building we know that it was not done with advanced modern you know, tools and again all over the world going back centuries and millennia people have been working with granite achieving uh, or trachyte those type of stones and achieving the same things and it's you know if you want to keep supporting it you know good on you but uh, don't uh, don't call it truth this week on the history channel did a race of super intelligent, hyperdimensional plush toys trick a race of one eyed aliens into cloning grey aliens to force the Smurfs to enslave Nephilim and monochrome giants into building the ancient monuments? Ancient astronaut theorists say yes. <laughs>